If you haven't seen part 1, go check out that video first. We lose no time and land on the first Obani Gemini moon. It's a very small sphere full of lasers, platforms and jump pads. The goal here is to use the refractor to link every satellite with the lasers in order to turn off the force field that takes us to the second moon, Pollux. This moon is more about fighting than puzzles, and at the end of the path, we reunite with Skid, who said he'd be here to help, remember? The last moon is protected by an Omega-class disintegration field. Not a good sign. Skid volunteers to hack the generator, but this might take a while, and we get a call from the Galactic Rangers. Blackwater City is under attack, and we decide to give them a hand while we wait for Skid. The Tyranoids are invading the place, and we join the resistance. Again, this part introduces another PvP map and enemies come in waves. We get a decent amount of money and prevent the invasion with the rangers. As a reward, we also get the gravity boots that stick to metal surfaces. No news from Skid means it's time to compete in some Annihilation Nation trials. We still have questions for Courtney Gears after we saw that music video on DAX. We easily complete the challenge and are rewarded with the Quark Hall of It Chapter 3. Gears arrive and flirts with Clank. She says she'll provide information concerning Nefarious in exchange for a role in Agent Clank's show. Clank agrees and invites her to visit the studios. Before we join her, I decide to clear the arena challenges and stock up on bolts. After an incident on the set of Holostar Studios, Ratchet is fired from the job and has to wait for Clank to be done. We play as Agent Clank, banana gun in hand, microbots available, and giant Clank action. Clank rescues Courtney, who has been captured by the enemy, and we wrap up filming. Turns out, it was all a ruse to kidnap him and bring him to Nefarious. He strikes a deal about joining their cause, as they should unite against the Squishies, and Asian Clank is a hero to robots across the galaxy. Clank obviously denies the offer, and we get back with Ratchet, as Tyranoids are attacking the studios. Ratchet storms in to look for Clank in the studios, we take on stronger Tyranoids units, and reunite the two. According to Clank, Courtney said Nefarious was aboard a star cruiser called the Leviathan. As Ratchet is leaving, we witness Clank's eyes turn red and explore the rest of the studios. Ratchet, you okay? What are you looking at? I'm not doing anything. And then when I do aim, I can't shoot them because Ratchet is Jesus Christ! Skid finally calls up, says Courtney Gears showed up, and we cut as he gets taken by security. We fire up the ship back to the Obani moons now that the force field is down, and we get to parkour our way inside futuristic musical tunnels and traps thanks to our gravity boots. This leads us to the testing lab for the Bioblitterator. A video starts playing, and powerless, we witness Skid get turned into a robot. It was Courtney Gears' plan to lead us here, and if we don't beat her, Ratchet is next. The battle won, we get a transmission from the Phoenix. Sasha has located Dr. Nefarious, but Ratchet is suspicious after what happened with Courtney Gears. Even so, there is no choice and we decide to check out the Zeldrin starport with Quark, where the Leviathan is refueling. Before checking in with Quark, I explore the starport for a bit and find the Bull Grabber V2, a super convenient tool that lets me break every crate and every decoration in a zone around me to attract all the balls automatically. Time to meet with Quark. <laughs> It was mating season. How could I have known she was your sister? How long have you been standing there? Too long. Holy sh**, dude. I don't remember that either. God damn it. We use Quark's shuttle to infiltrate the Star Cruiser and detect it. The plan is find Nefarious and finish the job. We make our way through an entire army of robot soldiers and ninjas to actually find Nefarious at the ship's command. Turns out, it's yet another trap. Nefarious initiates the ship's auto-destruction sequence, teleports out, and as the countdown starts ticking, Quark insists on saying he spotted something important and won't leave without it. We run back to the shuttle, and as we wait for Quark to show up, Evil Clank starts the engine, and we escape the exploding cruiser without Quark. Back on the Phoenix, Sasha is glad to see we made it out safe. But unfortunately, Captain Quark died a hero. The funeral takes place, and we receive chapter 4 of his vid comic series. The game might lead us to a clue of what Nefarious plans to do next, and we go to our quarters to play it. We get to play as Quark again, and battle Nefarious on Metropolis. The evil doctor, defeated, and reduced to a robotic head, swears to return one day to destroy Quark and bring Metropolis to its knees. Nefarious's head is tossed in the trash, and according to the narrator, the script is missing a few pages. We take a wild guess and head to Metropolis, since the bad guy said he would return one day. When we get there, it's already chaos, and Tyranoids attack from every angle. Nefarious is shown talking to his prisoner, the original non-evil Clank, and Ratchet enters the city. As we plow through hordes of laser beam shooting aliens, Nefarious is finally ready to unveil his evil creation and turn Metropolis inhabitants into robots. Every Tyranoid has now evolved into metallic creatures that hit harder and have more HP. Oh, come on, man. 
Give me a chance, dude. Blasting through them isn't as easy, but we manage to reach Nefarious and Clank on a train. Ratchet realizes his mistake with fake Clank, and as Nefarious escapes, we have to take down the giant Clank to rescue Clank. But let's get real. The actual enemies of this fight are gravity and ledges. Uh, no! <laughs> We free our partner and decide to stick a bit longer to help the rangers face this new robotic threat. Another PvP map is presented on Metropolis. We get to pilot a lot of overships and make even more money than before. The Galactic Rangers, to show appreciation for our work, offer us the Mapomatic, a gadget device that lets us know where to look for secret areas. And we fly back to the Phoenix. The whole galaxy is worried about being the next biobliterator target. And it's a long shot, but we decide to explore the Leviathan crash site on planet Zildrin to look for what Quark didn't want to leave without. We arrive on the crash site and, surprisingly enough, get a welcome comedy. I guess plenty of the robot soldiers didn't get destroyed in the accident and are glad to see Ratchet again. I spot a secret area on the map and decide to check it out. No, forgot to jump. Don't forget to jump this time. Please be careful this time. Okay, I was extra careful. With the nano pack, I can store extra nanotech that will heal me in case of an emergency. I get out of there and come across an empty escape pod from the Star Cruiser. It looks like we just missed whoever was inside. This pocket crotchetizer is still warm. Ew. We find a recording inside the pod. It shows Quark in disguise calling for a taxi to a secret location. The escape pod also contains the master plan, the data disk Quark went after before the explosion. We plan on going back to the Phoenix so Al can decode it, but the Galactic Rangers give me yet another call for help. Aridia is no under attack, and it's our surgeon duty to assist the troops. Nothing new happens here. Push back the invasion, decimate enemy reinforcements, and hovercraft to victory. It's always good fun though, and worth a lot of bolts. Once we get that out of the way, we can follow the original plan to return to the Phoenix. Skid is still a robot. Dude, dude, dude. What a trip. We give the chip to Al, and by the time he goes over the encryption, he gifts us the chapter 5 of Quark Vid comics they found in his quarters. Apparently this one is a secret, and was actually never published. This missing chapter of Quark's legacy reveals that Nefarious survived. He kidnaps Quark and lets him rot in a prison for a while. When Quark manages to break free, we get to play his escape from the cold facility. The end cinematic reveals a dark secret Quark probably preferred to keep quiet. After the escape, he took refuge in a secret hideout on an asteroid, terrified at the idea of Nefarious revenge. After years of not hearing about the evil genius, Quark came back to the public, assuming Nefarious wasn't a threat to the galaxy anymore. On that frozen asteroid, we first visit the secret area that rewards us with the chance to buy the PDA, a gadget that lets us shop for ammo from anywhere at an extra price. We also get to play with warp pads and fight the security measures that Quark set up to repel visitors. We see Quark chilling behind a force field and decide to send Clank into the underground cavern to look for a way in. It's another classic Clank level. Find the nanobots and take out the force fields, use the banana gun and distract the cameras. At the end of a hallway filled with laser beams, Clank reaches a button and opens the way towards the fallen hero. As we try to reason him, Quark decides to stay in hiding. I suddenly realized something very important. I could have died! Me, Captain Quark! Clank gives him a wholesome speech and we take off. Seconds after boarding the ship, Sasha calls and declares emergency status. Whatever was on that master plan chip got Nefarious worried, and in an attempt to get his hands back on the data disk, he attacks the Phoenix. Back on the pride of the galactic fleet, we get rid of the ninjas in the hangar and head for the bridge. The platform is broken and we need to take another way towards the commands, also filled with Nefarious's ninjas and big robots. All is well when I rescue the Q-Force members in time. I'll crack the data disk and we know of every step of Nefarious's plan, including every planet he plans to invade. Moreover, we also learned that the biobliterator has to recharge after every attack, and it's currently doing so on planet Koros. We grab that opportunity to try our luck at destroying it, we can't let it reach the next planet on the list. The next target is Velden. When we reach the place, there's just one problem. The thing is huge and my guns just won't do. Clank suggests we use the planetary defense gigantic iron cannon on the target, and we rampage through a bloodthirsty robot-infested city once more. We manage to destroy the rest of Nefarious's grunts and access the cannon control room. Do not mess with Agent Clank. <laughs> ah! 
We thought that was the end of it, but Sasha calls us with worrying news. A new bio-obliterator model, even more dangerous than the one we just destroyed, is at Nefarious' master control center on planet Mylon. The command center is the ultimate challenge. An entire army is waiting for me. We go head to head with hordes of robot-enhanced tyrannoids that hit like trucks, as well as every other type of robotic war machine that crosses path with us. We hack our way inside the command center just to find even more enemies inside. But we hang tight, we can't let anything happen to Velden. Unfortunately, we arrive too late to confront Nefarious, but the Rangers, with whom I fought along this whole time, come to the rescue and we follow the Biobliterator V2 to the launch site. The ultimate battle is upon us, as Ratchet parachutes down and destroys the control panel. You again? You will pay for your insolence, you miserable rodent! You'll regret! <laughs> Sorry, Nefarious, your flight's been cancelled. Lawrence! Lawrence! How can I be of assistance? Annihilate him! Just kidding. You've reached my holographic voicemail. Leave your name and a brief message. Ta-ta! Ah, fine. I'll do it myself. Phase 1 is just a 1v1 battle. Nefarious throws lasers, gravity bombs, and mirror images at Ratchet until he... surrenders? But to throw myself on your mercy! Really? Uh, I mean, that's right, Nefarious. Your reign of terror is finally sucker! <laughs> Phase 2 is a chase. We get to fight even more robots while trying to not get hit by a giant laser. The rangers come to the rescue and we confront Nefarious just like in phase one. Some more battling ensues, and turns out... Right. Is this important, sir? It's almost time for my solo. Begin the transformation! I call it Base Odyssey. Now, Lawrence! Oh, if you insist. The Biobliterator V2 is also a giant robot Gundam suit. It looks like it's all over for our heroes. But a miraculous timing by Quark actually saves the day. I don't believe it! Believe it, toaster head! It offers enough time for Ratchet to jump into a ship and begin firing. Is it just gonna be this? Engage the teleporter. Would you care to specify a destination, sir? Who cares? Just get us out of here. Tyson. What? That wasn't even close to 60 seconds! Bye-bye. The galaxy is saved, and we witness the release of the latest holofilm in the Secret Agent Clank series. Credits roll, and we get to see Nefarious and Lawrence drifting in space on an asteroid, unable to teleport to a planet because of the distance. And that's it for Ratchet and Clank 3. I played some challenge mode to try it. Basically, you get to replay a harder version of the game with all the gear you already got, and also get a multiplicator on bolts, depending on combos of defeated enemies. It's a great way to relive the experience, and since the gear is completely different from the first playthrough, you feel very powerful from the very start. Let's see the battle against Quark. <laughs> Well, you can also buy the mega upgrades for your V5 weapons and make them even more powerful. You can buy the ultimate armor at the Phoenix, and if you have the courage to save up 2.7 million, you can also buy the Rhino 3, the biggest handheld firepower the galaxy has to offer. I hope you enjoyed the video, I surely did enjoy making it, and I'm thinking about continuing with the following Ratchet and Clank games in the future. Anyway, thank you for watching, leave a like and subscribe if you want. Okay, bye!